Welcome to the motherfucking Weasley update, bitch. It is season two, episode seven, and the date is October 28th. This is uh, likely going to have to be a pretty short one because I am helping me padre and brothers hook it out to my grandparents' house and uh, help them move some shit. They are like getting ready to move to Arizona or something, maybe. I don't know, but I'm actually mostly naked right now and still fucking getting dressed, so I'm just going to be rambling while I'm uh, putting my clothes on, I guess. Shaved my face right beforehand so you wouldn't have to listen to that. Dude, that is such a bitch. I fucking hate having to shave my face. Oh, also, I should feel like I, I feel like I should say I'm stoned and ready to ramble. That's right, you heard me right. Sober October has come to an end, because I'm a weak bitch, um, long story short, there was a bit of a COVID scare at my work, and it got shut down, and while I was waiting test results, you know, you've got a quarantine, so, uh, so I just basically thought, like, yeah, there's no way I'm, I'm quarantining without, um, without smoking the, the good ganj. I guess I seriously underplayed, like, how much work, helped me not be smoking during the day and I don't even like to say it like that because that makes it sound like I'm like constantly fiending for weed or whatever but uh but yeah like work honestly just takes up so much of your day that um that's that much time where it's inaccessible and you know sort of out of mind uh so as soon as that was gone I was like fuck and I think also just the thought of potentially having COVID played a huge role because I got, you know, everyone got sent home early from that shift or whatever. And I came home and that was the first time all of sober October where I was like, fuck, I really want to smoke. Um, and I, uh, I stayed up, watched some wild boys with my, my parents and my sister. Um, and the whole time I was like, just wait until the morning. You'll, you'll feel fine in the morning. And the first, no shit, the first thing I thought when I woke up that morning was, uh, was fuck, I want to smoke. And you, you know, it's actually been the most surprising part of coming back after two weeks is I'm still dreaming. Like any stoner knows it's, uh, your dreams just disappear once you start smoking. And my understanding, I'm sure I've talked about this before, my understanding is that it's, like, got something to do with your memory, and weed obviously fucks that up, so you just don't dream or whatever, but 11 months out of the year, I don't dream. And then when sober October rolls around, of course I start dreaming every fucking night, like a motherfucker. And first of all, I mean, I might be outing myself here, like, if there's any dream psychologists listening, potentially, they could maybe email me and tell me what the fuck is up, because I've been having violent dreams, I think I talked about this, violent, werewolves, bears, dude, I had a dream, like, three nights ago, and here's the weird part, there's, like, a reoccurring aspect to it, and I can't even trace it back, but this is probably the third or fourth dream I've had about neglecting a class, that's, like, God, I don't know why I gotta catch my breath. Jesus. That's, like, the shit I have nightmares about. It's, like, neglecting a class and fucking, like, losing the grades. Or, like, every time I've had this dream, it's been in the same classroom. Which is not any classroom I've ever actually been in. And it's the same fucking teacher. And I always just take a seat. And then he'll start talking about, like, these ten assignments that were due. And I just realize I didn't do any of those 10 assignments, or it'll be like, I don't know, I'm, I'm chilling at my studio doing some other homework, and I realize I haven't done an assignment for this other class, it's super weird, so this most recent one though, oh my god, it's so strange, so not only did I go into that classroom, realize that I had forgot a bunch of shit, and start stressing out, but in this school, there was a chick who shapeshifted into a bear and slaughtered people that didn't do good in school. And so, like, most of this dream, I basically went into the classroom, realized 
that I wasn't going to be able to pass the class, so I just left, walk out into the hall, and then for the rest of my dream, essentially, I'm getting chased by a chick who just turned into a fucking bear. And it's like trying to kill me because I did bad in that class. And one of the only things I remember super vividly is that I'm like running along and I run into this room and there's this girl who I can only presume is also a shitty student. And uh, she's like, I, I know a great place to hide. Like, come here. And she basically punches a fucking wall and then an impression comes in and slides over like the mansion in X2. And, um, and I fucking crawl into this little crawl space and she's sealing it up. And the last thing I see in, like, the crack, like, it doesn't close all the way. She just stops, like, 95% of the way done. And I can see through the crack that the chick caught her. And then I just see her shapeshift into a bear and kill this chick. And I just had to, like, step out and meet my fate and something happened I don't even remember. But how fucked up is that? That's so weird, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, but, um... I've still been dreaming. That's the craziest part is... Um... Smoking again and I'm dreaming still. Um... Like, last night... Dude, I slept in hard this morning because... Fucking... Last night, I don't know, my dream... I just couldn't get out of my dream to save my life. Like, most of the time... When I do dream, I don't feel like it changes my my sleep schedule at all. But I feel like, no, I know that's not true. Because I think your dreams only last two minutes max. But it felt like so fucking long. That when I woke up this morning, I was like, Jesus Christ, that dream kept me asleep. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, if you're hearing any friction in the background, that's because I'm a fucking dragon. I have eczema and so my, I'm like, as a, my mom would tell me growing up, I'm like scaly as shit. And so every morning when I get out of the shower, I basically have to fucking jump in a vat of lotion. It's such a bitch. You have no fucking idea, dude. It's like every fucking day, at least I have to apply at least, like, three layers of lotion to most of my skin. Just so it's not ridiculously dry. What the fuck kind of bullshit is that? Eczema. You know, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. Is it a disorder? Let, let's look it up. Eczema. Okay. Let's see. An itchy... Inflammation of the skin. Optic dermatitis usually develops in early childhood. It's more common in people who have a family history of the condition. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, short and sweet, I guess. God damn it, it's just a pain in the ass. Let me tell you. And to go along with shaving the face, brushing the teeth. And here's the thing, I love brushing my teeth. Like, I love the act of doing it. Just listening to some music, listening to a video or something as I go. Not not fucking bad at all, but shaving my face every morning fucking sucks. And um, having to swim in lotion also fucking sucks. But, I mean, I've had to do it like my whole life, so... I don't know why I'm bitching about it now. And I don't know why this made me... Like, wear this tr train of thought is going, but for some reason that just reminded me. There was this never-ending loop when I was a kid in elementary school where my mom would buy me nice pants. I would take them to school. I would come home and there would be holes in them because I'd be fucking around at recess. And it was like this never-ending loop of my mom being pissed and being like, don't put holes in your pants and then just like put me in a new pair of pants send me to school and I would just come home with them fucked up. And it's like, well, mom, why don't you let me just go to school with the holy jeans if you know I'm just gonna fucking get gnarly with them at recess. And she just could not stand the thought of uh, her kid going to school in holy jeans. So she just always bought new jeans and I've got to respect her for it. That's honestly uh, fucking... Bold. Yeah, it, and 
I mean, it was frequent. I used to get grounded about that so much. I also used to get grounded about cleaning the bathrooms. Like, that was a, a running joke between my friends. It was like any time I would try to bail out of something, they'd be like, oh, what, did you not clean the bathroom good enough? It's like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we did our chores. I'm really glad, though, because that sort of conditioned us for a lot of things. My siblings and I... I like the most, uh, I guess, how do I describe this? Like the clearest view, I guess, or perspective is a better word that I've ever gotten of like where my parents were coming from when they put a curfew on me and, uh, and like didn't let me do certain things. It's like my cat every night. We let him go out during the day, but at night we bring him in. And every fucking night he does his best to get out whatever way he can. Like any time a window's opening, a door's opening, he's there. And uh, and I like try, you just can't explain to him. Like, we're not doing this to be an asshole, dude. Like, we just want you to be safe. You have no idea. And I, I was just thinking that one time, and I was like, holy shit, that's like what my parents were doing. And they, they always even said that. They were like, well, dude, we're not trying to be an asshole. But, uh, yeah. Man, I can't even imagine being a parent. What a fucking crazy thing. My parents gave me this book. I'm sure I've talked about this on the podcast, too. Um, when I graduated, called, like, uh things we wish we knew when we were 18 and it's just got all sorts of little advice in there so so fucking awesome i read that honestly pretty frequently which reminds me i need to still finish lord of the rings holy shit it is a dense book dude let me fucking tell you i'm man i don't know it's honestly been a while since i read it probably like 300 some pages in and it's still like I mean the whole first book has been read it's a one volume edition but um I think the entire first book is like 225 pages probably right around there because I did not get super far into uh the second one I think it's five books honestly which is like one when I'm reading it, it's like, holy shit, how did the movies leave this much out? But then when I think about it, it's really more of a testament to what a great job Peter Jackson did in like condensing these books because there is a lot. Oh, by the way, we have got to talk about Moon Knight. Motherfucking Moon Knight. If you don't know who that is, it's a Marvel character that was announced to get a Disney Plus show a while ago. And Oscar Isaacs has just been cast. So, which is really weird because there was sort of no casting rumors at all until that day. I mean, it was really kept on the DL. And the casting rumors were like David Deegs or something like that and Nick Kroll. Um... And then not long after that, Oscar Isaacs was cast. Which, you know, I definitely don't hate Oscar Isaacs. Like, X-Men Apocalypse was pretty bad. And I don't think it was his fault, but his character did fucking suck. And, um... I also, I was talking to my brothers about this last night. I I don't like Poe Dameron from Star Wars as a character. Because it just so feels like... They were just like, we need a Han Solo character. And then they just... God damn it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not particularly compelled by any of those characters. I thought, I don't know, Finn was not... I mean, maybe in the first one, but not super gripping. Same with Rey, Poe, like I said. I mean, Luke was just written as a fucking hoe in episode 7. What the fuck, dude? Oh my god, all I wanted out of that new trilogy was to see Luke Skywalker kick ass. And you know what we didn't get? 
you know, no Luke Skywalker kicking ass. But instead, we got fucking Rose and Finn going to some gambling planet. What the fuck, dude? What in the fuck? I can't. I'm pretty salty about it, but they're doing the Mandalorian, so um, they definitely have me on that. And that comes back Friday. Woo! I think it's like an hour long, too, which is awesome, because all the other episodes have been like a half hour. Oh my god, dude, that show has really restored my my faith in Star Wars, and Ewan McGregor was apparently on set, like, uh, doing costume tests for Obi-Wan. It's, oh, fuck me. That Obi-Wan show is going to... Oh, at least I hope it's going to be awesome. I've, I've definitely got to give it a chance after uh, what they did with The Mandalorian, because... Th- that is honestly some of the best Star Wars content ever. Same with Rogue One. Like, I, I I think Rogue One, objectively, is one of the best Star Wars movies. But when people do their rankings, they usually just, like, don't include uh, those, like, offsprings. Just do the, the main saga. But god damn it. <laughs> That's, what, what's so funny about that to me is, like, Episodes 1 and 2 are garbage movies. And you could argue 3 is a garbage movie too. But um, I I honestly like 3. I don't know. It's yeah, Maybe it's nostalgia. I'll definitely attribute some of my liking um, to nostalgia. But uh, I honestly think of all the prequels. It's, um, it's not only not bad, it shines. Which honestly says more about how bad episodes 1 and 2 were. But, I don't know, like, 1, Yoda versus Palpatine was, of course, awesome. Anakin versus Obi-Wan was, of course, awesome. But it was just so cool to see Darth Vader be made. Yeah, you know, fucking Kanye West was just saying something about that. That he thinks the... The prequel trilogy is better than the sequels. And as a fan of Star Wars, I have to agree. Because, like, the difference between the prequels and the sequels is that the prequels made sense for the larger story and felt like it was, like, filling in the dots. Um, But the writing and production quality was just absolutely fucking garbage. Fucking garbage and then it's the inverse of of that with the sequels big budgets like the effects are some of the best i've ever seen Uh, oh my god insane um even the the writing itself is pretty good but uh but as a star wars fan garbage doesn't contribute anything to the larger story it actually takes away from it making Ray the chosen one, bringing Palpatine back, like, it was a blatant fucking cash grab, and I'm glad it's over. Oh my god, I'm just, I'm still fired up about it. So, as a Star Wars fan, again, I do think the prequels are better. But as a fan of cinema, I'd, yeah, probably say that, that the sequels are better. I don't know, I, some of the CG is definitely dated, but I'm just willing to suspend my disbelief because it actually feels like a Star Wars movie, and not just some like, oh my god, I mean, I, I watched a whole video that was about how Rise of Skywalker was at sometimes shot for shot, beat by beat, the exact same as Endgame, and once you once you see it, you will never ever be able to unsee it, and you know what, that's an entertaining movie. And the cinematography is crazy good. That was the other thing that Ryder, Tar- <laughs> Ryder Parker and I were talking about last night. Is like, episode 7 and episode 9 have some beautiful cinematography. And that's just J.J. Abrams. His color grading is perfect all the time. Like, it's bright but not oversaturated. <sighs> so awesome. Like, when Kylo Ren first comes in. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, just down to, like, the flames on the ground are just luminescent enough. And 
I mean, there's there's this shot of like TIE fighters silhouetted with suns that was our lock screen on the computer downstairs forever. The communal computer. Yeah. Oh my god. J.J. Abrams just always kills that shit. That's the one thing I always gotta give him. Even Superman Returns with Brendan Ruth and uh... What the fuck is going on with my MacBook charger? It's like it's plugged in. I've got an older Mac MacBook at this point. It's plugged in and there's this little orange light on it that lights up when it's charging but it's like softly blinking god I go oh my god what is that why is it doing that I really hope this isn't some like red ring of death shit like the xbox cause that shit was so fucking lame anyways we were talking about moon knight I don't know how I got on that star wars rant just cause of oscar isaacs I guess but I think he's a good actor and I think he'll probably do a really good job. Um, and I'm pumped for it. It's just Moon Knight is such a dark character that as soon as it was announced for Disney+, Plus, I was like, really? But I don't know. Who knows what they'll do with Blade? Because Mahershala Ali, who will be the titular character, uh, said that he's excited about bringing a darker presence to the Marvel Universe. And honestly, I, I hope that that's the first rated R Marvel Cinematic Universe movie besides Deadpool like if they put that in the MCU I hope that would be first just because I want to see that sooner god damn it and like of all the Fox characters they don't need to reboot them you know with all the X-Men they they're gonna have to start fresh but Deadpool is just so self-referential enough that well that was pretty amateur got a phone call so I had to uh, put this shit on airplane mode. Anyways, all I was saying was that um, with Deadpool crossing over into the Marvel Universe, it is as simple as uh, making a joke about it. Like, that, like, that's the best part of those movies, is that he just makes jokes about, like, oh, well, this timeline is so confusing. Like, which Professor X are we going to? God damn it, I love those movies. They were everything you'd fucking want them to be. And Ryan Reynolds is just the shit. So is his wife, Blake Lively. I am I mean, you guys have got to check out their fucking Twitter. Like, like he'll do something, like, for her, both, her birthday, post a happy B-Day pic, and have it be him, her, and Scarlett Johansson, and just, like, crop her halfway out. Oh, my God. And she always gets them back. It's sort of like, that's one of my, uh, I don't usually like follow couples and shit like that, but um, I definitely see what they're up to because it's always hilarious. Same with The Rock. Like, I'm not even that big a fan of The Rock, but like him and Kevin Hart, so, so fucking funny. Although, as I'm sure you can imagine, my favorite squad in all of Hollywood is uh, uh, like James Franco Seth Rogen, all them. Just like the Judd Apatow crew are so fucking funny. I love their movies so much. Super bad. Pineapple Express. This is the end. Like, I have had a riot watching all of those fucking movies. Oh my god. I can't believe it's already 1249. I don't even know why I ended that fucking... Why I kept going, like, I I really am gonna have to get out of here soon. I've neglected to get dressed this whole time. Fuck. Well, I know it's gonna be cold as shit, so... No linen fucking pants today. I, uh, discovered linen pants over the summer, and I never want to go back. But it dropped, like, 20 degrees in a week. Oh my god, my my buddy Derek and I went on a walk the other night from, like, 12 to to three just around town and it was so fucking cold that all we could think about the whole time is what we were what we would do if we were homeless because it was just like holy fuck what do you do about this level of cold with nowhere to go no shelter like i'm not savvy enough to like 
I, I don't even know. That's the thing is, that's how uneducated I am, is that I can't even think of an example of some woodsy or urban trick that you could, you know, perpetrate to get some fucking heat or something. Oh, Jesus. That is a scary thought. And it, you know what? Maybe in Hawaii it's not bad. No. That was dumb. That was insensitive. But it certainly would be better than here. Sort of how I feel about buying cars. And don't get me wrong, I love the Pacific Northwest. But if I lived in California, buying a car would be a lot easier. Because, uh... I wouldn't have to worry about shit like four-wheel drive. Just like knowing that it's gonna snow so many months out of the year and... I am just gonna need to fucking deal with it. Because my Civic, my old Civic, nor my new Rolla are gonna be able to fade the snow. I mean, the Civic, definitely. I got into a wreck in that thing, in the snow. While delivering some pizza, it sucked super bad. And, um... Whew, I haven't tried out the Rolla, but I don't feel like I need to, to know that it would be a fucking train wreck. And that's the thing, it's like, I'm always more worried about, uh, like, hurting other people. Like, the idea of just being a negli- negligent driver and hurting and or potentially killing someone else is horrifying. Like, what a, oh my god. It's a tragic thought, because I'm just playing on my phone or some bullshit like that, so. I don't know, I try to be cautious of that. And Bluetooth has honestly really helped me. Like, I never anticipated, um, Bluetooth audio in a car being, like, I always thought, like, oh, that's convenient, but it was never a huge thing for me, but now that I have it, I could not go back. just connects automatically, and, like, that sounds so lazy, but, uh, I just always have trouble with aux cords. It's always a bitch, dude. Especially now that there's no aux inputs, so you have to have a dongle on the iPhone. Like, fuck me. I don't even know what Galaxy it was, but I think it was not the most recent. But the one before that still had an aux cord, and I was just, or an aux input, rather. It's just like, fuck. Why can't the iPhone do it? Why? Because they just love to fuck you over in whatever little ways they can. That's why they're saying with their new phones, they don't, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they're not including chargers and shit. They're trying to mask it as a environmental thing, but do not be fooled, it absolutely is not. Alright, well, I'm fully dressed and I'm gonna get the fuck out of here, so I will talk to you guys later. Peace.